is Gamma and today we're going to be talking about advanced em matter energy system. So the first thing you're going to make is a ME power relay. Here's the recipe for that. Then ME wireless access point. So these two are used in combination. So first thing, ME power relay. It is used to charge your wireless access terminal. And Here's the recipe for the terminal. Basically, it's a remote, so that way you can access your ME network from a distance. Uh, and the second one, wireless access point, is basically an item that you're going to need if you want to use your uh, wireless access terminal. So once you made that access terminal, you're going to have to place it inside your ME controller, so that way it gets linked up with the network. And once it says linked, you can access your items in the ME network by right clicking and whenever you take an item and or put it back in you, you see that it used some energy so that's what this uh, power relay is for you right click on it, you place your wireless access terminal inside and it's going to charge it up and now you can use it again next thing, ME IO port so the IO port is used for transfer, item transfer. So basically you can transfer items out of your storage cluster, uh, storage cells. I call them hard drives. So if you have a hard drive full of items and you want to put it inside your network, you can just place it there. And it's going to transfer all that into your ME network. You can also um, transfer items out of your network into the hard drive by switching that arrow. Next thing, ME fluid terminal. So this is basically the same type of terminal like you would use for items. This, but the only difference is this one is for liquids. So as you can see here, I have some lava, some milk, and some mob essence stored inside. And if you wanna. Oh, and for these, you're going to need different hard drives. You're going to need fluid storage ones to be able to store uh, any liquids in your ME network. And these are the normal ones for the items. So if you want to take something outside, let's say mob essence, you, s you click on mob essence, you take your bucket and you place it here and it fills it up. And if you want to place it back in, you put it there and you get an empty bucket back. Okay, next thing, ME condenser. This is the block right here, and it's used for many different things. Well, three actually. One is to destroy items. You can put a hard drive there and have all the all its items destroyed. Second thing is to condense items into matter uh, matter balls. These are basically like uh, ammunition for the matter cannon and then you can shoot these matter balls with the cannon and the next thing, the thing that we're going to be using it for is the singularity so basically you're going to need the storage cluster if you want to make if you want to make a singularity and the storage cluster is pretty expensive but yeah you, you're going to have to make the storage cluster and you're going to need 256,000 of items compressed into one, well, which is going to be that singularity. And I'll show you later how to automate that, so you don't have to uh, put hard drives manually inside to destroy the items and compress them into singularities. Next thing is ME part partition editor. So this one is used for uh, editing editing your hard drives. So you can take a hard drive, put it there and set filters on it, for example, so that you place dirt and grass, it's only going to be able to store that type of items on inside it. So it won't be able to store diamonds, gold, or any only dirt and grass, grass blocks. You can change these filters whenever you want. Okay. Next thing, ME pattern encoder. This is a, a block that uh, it lets you create a recipe 
for your crafting computer. I'll be show I'll be showing that later. So actually I can show that now. First you're gonna need some patterns, blank patterns. Here's the recipe how you make that. You place these black blank patterns inside and then let's say we take some wood place it like here so that creates a crafting table you encode it and now you have a pattern for the crafting table which you can then put inside the crafting computer and if you have some wood and now we do it shows us that we can craft a crafting table so now we click on it and we select how many we want for example two crafting tables begin and it's gonna craft those two crafting tables because it knows how to do it it has a recipe inside it and if you don't have materials for it and you want to craft let's say 10 crafting tables nothing's gonna happen until you put some wood in and then you see that it crafted 10 crafting tables okay so next thing ME chest basically this one is just used so you can check your hard drive so let's see Here we have some items we put that into an ME chest and okay it's not linked up I believe it has to be linked for the network in order to work yes so it basically shows you what's inside that hard drive you can take it out and edit it and do other things with it we're gonna talk about that later. Uh, next thing, ME Basic Export Bus. So these are used to export items out of the ME network. There is also three different versions of these. There is a precision one and fuzzy one. Basic ones uh, simply export one by one item out of the network and you cannot set filters on them. In the precision ones you can set the filters so you can uh, select which wide items you want to be exported out of the network. Same thing goes for the import buses. These are used to uh, import items inside the network. Export ones take the items outside, import ones uh, suck the items into the ME network. And same thing goes for them. There's basic ones, there's precision ones and there's fuzzy ones. Precision ones like I said before, they have filters, so you can filter which items you want to import inside the network. Fuzzy ones, they're a bit more complicated, they have more options, and we're not going to be using them right now. And the last thing is the ME level emitter. Also, I'll be showing about that uh, log in a bit. So, the ME precision import bus. Here we have some items in the chest, diamonds and gravel. So this is the precision import bus. When you right click on it, you can set the filters. You can also set if you want it to be always active, active without signal or active with signal. So we're, for now, we're just gonna set it on act, always active. And here you can select it, the option uh, if you want it to move entire stacks or just single items. We're gonna leave it on single items and we're gonna put a diamond in a filter. It doesn't use the diamond, it just creates a copy, a ghost item of the of the block or material that you used. So in this case, diamond. So now we're going to take that import bus and we're going to place it here. And as you can see, it slowly drains the diamonds out inside the ME network. So now we set it to stack mode it's going to be taking out stacks and placing them inside the ME network and as you can see it's going pretty fast and when it's going to reach gravel it'll stop because we only set diamonds in the filter not the gravel and now it stopped but if we remove the diamond from the filter it's going to drain everything that's inside the chest So here's the example how you can use your ME level emitter. Let's say you put some sand inside your uh, ME network 
and you also have 1000 or any amount of glass and then you can use that level emitter you can set the glass inside its filter just by having glass in your hand and shift clicking it'll set glass in the filter you set it to any number that you want and in this case we set it on emit when levels are below or equal to limit so basically the level emitter is going to be emitting redstone signal whenever amount of glass drops below 1024 and what you're also going to need is the precision export buzz below the furnace you're going to set it on ex uh, you're going to set its filter so it exports sand when it receives a signal so basically what that does is when uh, levels of glass drop below the amount you selected in this case 1024 it's going to be emitting signal and then that's going to activate the export bus which will then send sand into the redstone furnace redstone furnace will cook that sand into glass and here's the ME interface which is right now not connected I forgot to do that and then that ME interface is basically acting as a precision uh, as a import bus so basically when you any items that go inside it are automatically exported inside the network we're using these ME interfaces instead of the precision import buses because they're cheaper to make so here's the example of how that works so I'm gonna take some glass so now the levels are below 1024 and as you can see this level emitter is glowing export bus is exporting sand inside the furnace and then that sand gets cooked and stored inside the ME network so once it's gonna reach 1024 uh, glass the level emitter will stop emitting the redstone signal and the export bus will stop exporting sand so there's that now the next thing we're gonna talk about is uh, the automation of your ME condenser so the only thing we're gonna have to do is uh, take your export bus set uh, set it so it has uh, any item that you so for example if you have millions of dirt or millions of cobble that you're getting from your quarries you can simply set for example dirt inside the export bus filter and put that filter on your ME condenser and now it's going to be exporting that dirt to create the singularities that we talked about before you can also move it on uh, set it on stack mode so that way it goes faster and once you have 256,000 items compressed it'll create a singularity and this is the singularity I'll talk about that singularity in a bit and now we're gonna go build a crafting computer so basically we're gonna need the uh, ME assembler containment walls these are gonna be used for the frame uh, you can make a square or well yeah, you can the length, width, and height don't really matter as long as you make it the way I'm showing you right now. So you can make it much larger than this if you want uh, more space for patterns and if you want it to be able to craft the recipes faster. So you use these blocks for the frame, then you use uh, heat lens for the sides, <coughs> for the sides. on the inch side you're going to be putting uh, ME pattern providers and uh, ME crafting CPUs depending on your liking so if you put more crafting pa uh, pattern providers you're going to be able to store more uh, crafting recipes inside here you can see I have 10 pages for the recipes we're gonna put just six of them and the rest we're gonna put crafting CPUs so the more crafting CPUs you have the faster it will be able to craft the recipes and now once we put the last block it's gonna 
uh, shape itself into that multi-structure one and, and there we go so now when you right click on it you can see that we have six uh, pages for the recipes which is plenty you shouldn't actually need more than that and here you can store your all crafting recipes so the next thing we're gonna go talk about is the what we can use the singularities for and so basically you're gonna need 16 quantum field rings field rings and then two quantum link chambers and yeah that's pretty much it for now so we're gonna place them down like this and you're gonna put the quantum link chamber in the middle now once you have the singularity from your ME condenser so once that fills up to all the way to 256,000 it's gonna create a singularity and this is the singularity then you're gonna make TNT doesn't matter if you use big one or tiny one I would be using tiny one you're gonna throw the singularity next to it okay where did that one go? So like this, and I'm not sure if you need two uh, pulverized. What you have to pulver pulverize the ender pearl, and then you get that uh, ender pearl dust. So I believe you have to use two ender pearl dust and a singularity, and blow them up. So then I'll take the torch, activate the TNT. And now what we get is the quantum entangled singularities. Basically these two singularities are connected one with another no matter where they are in space. So the good thing about them, well the bad thing actually is that you <laughs> they both have the same name so it's hard to tell which one is linked with which if you have more than just two. So the good thing to do is have them renamed in, uh, with the anvil so I believe I don't know if I can actually without levels um, let's call it quantum singularity one out of two and the second one second pair uh, well the second item of the pair quantum singularity 2 out of 2 so now we know that these two are the pair so we're gonna put one of these two inside the quantum link chamber now you can see that uh, effect inside the chamber also you're gonna need to power it you place down the conduit in the middle not on the edges you have to power it on either uh, on the bottom left right or top and now it's gonna start glowing as you can see it glows when it's powered and one more thing is you're gonna have to connect it with your ME network okay so not that one is linked up with your ME network now let's say you go to nether or moon Mars doesn't matter where you go you can create another one Put the chamber in the middle, second piece of the pair in the middle, then you power it and connect the ME cable out of it inside, uh, outside, and connect it to your access terminal. And now you can access all the items that are all the way on your base, for example, on the earth, no matter where you are. So, like I said even if you're in nether, mars, moon, another uh, age, miscraft age, you can access all your items using this. So that's pretty much it for this episode. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed the video make sure you subscribe. Goodbye. Yeah.